Daredevil. Scrotal Recall is really funny. Scrotal Recall, is right. Yes. yes. I, it's That's on my queue. I haven't started that yeah. one Yeah. Oh, queue it up. Um, I love binge watching. Yeah, I mean, I binge and not just, I mean, look at the size of me, man. I'm a binger. I did not leave the house until I passed. Hours and hours every day, and I loved it. I am a binge watcher. Four Midwest Guys presents Binge Watch. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Four Midwest Guys Presents Binge Watch. Uh, today we'll be reviewing Daredevil Season 2, and to help me break that down is my brother Aaron. Yeah, how's it going, man? How's it going, dude? It's all right. Good. All right, guys, uh, let's uh, break it down. Oh, Mr. Ankenbauer couldn't be with us. He's doing some overtime work, but I know he'll be back. Hopefully he'll be back for us with Luke Cage next uh, next week. So. Yep. But uh, let's dive into Daredevil Season 2. Uh, this was the third Netflix Marvel comic book series. Again, uh, sticking to the format of the previous two, 13 episodes. Um, this season was much more mythical than Season 1. You definitely have that from a lot more of the hand and like stick sort of storyline mm, with Electra. it. Electra. Yeah. Um, like You don't focus on like Kingpin to the same extent, even though he does kind of make a brief appearance later yeah. on. But yeah, like you have like kind of... It's also weird because you almost have dual storylines of the season. Yes. Whereas so. last season it was kind of very straightforward. You're sticking to one. Mm-hmm. Whereas here it kind of splinters off into almost like two separate storylines. So it's almost like they're running side by side. Well, yeah. Because but you, they kind of interweave as spots. They interweave in and out of each other. But it's almost like a counterbalance to the mythical story of the hand, the pit, uh, the black cloud. There was a black cloud. Not black cloud. Black, uh, black sky. Black sky. Thank you. Uh, and to counter that, you had the Punisher origin yeah. storyline that they inter- inter- interweaved mm. with it. Or Which was with. actually kind of interesting because then you have like this almost courtroom drama like effect that starts taking place like midway through. Yeah, uh, of and that honestly, I thought that was kind of cool. Like, I'm not really into a lot of crime shows or like kind of Law and Order sort of things, but like, like you have like kind of Murdoch and Foggy that have been kind of lawyers, and you ha- even yeah. kind of go into their backstory a bit more when they're at the larger law f- law firm. Mm-hmm. Law firm. Law firm. Yeah. Um, so like it was interesting having that kind of mythical and the mundane kind of because I mean that's their day to day job essentially. Right. So it's, it's the alternate ego of Daredevil. Yeah, like it's almost nice seeing like both sides of that in some way. It was uh, yeah, it was very counterbalanced, and they balanced it out very very well. I. Th- um, and honestly, when they they with that whole uh, Punisher line, when he got arrested, I thought that would be the last we saw it. Yeah, I, I did was, too. I was not expecting the the trial and the continuation no, really, of the like story. the continuation of that worked so well. I was like, oh, okay, he's 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 done right here. They'll yeah, like I was always expecting that to be like kind of well, maybe they'll bring him back in a season, season or two, or he'll right. pop up somewhere else. But no, like they kept running with it. it was like. Oh no, this is totally worth it. Yeah, like, you have him in prison. And it's like, oh, oh yes, that's really good. Um, like that's almost like you have that scene in like Watchmen when you have like Rorschach in prison, uh-huh. and he's like, no, you have a misunderstanding. I'm not in here with you. You're in here with me. Yeah, we'll we'll dig into that later, especially the fight scene here in a little bit. Um, let's talk about Daredevil himself. Uh, in this season, we kind of see him dealing with being not just Matt Murdock. But Daredevil as well, trying yeah. to balance his life between the two. Yeah, I mean, that's something he kind of has an issue in the last season with. Um, but this one, you definitely see it to almost a greater extent. Like, mm-hmm. not only is he dealing with, you know, some of his past childhood traumas, but we also see kind of a love interest kind of thing pop up. You yeah. also see, once again, going to the actual trial portion of it, where, like, he misses some of his own arguments. Like, he's oh, yeah. he pushes more of that, you know, trial onto Foggy because he's not showing up for Be- it. Yeah, it's like he has the idea to defend Punisher, but then doesn't do anything about it <laughs> yeah. after that fact. Yeah, uh, like, like don't be wrong, he shows up for spots, but, like, he really pushes more and more on that onto, you know, Foggy. Mm-hmm. And, like, 
he in exchange has to kind of step up for a lot of those positions where he was expecting that to be more of a team sort of dynamic. And that's kind of where Electra comes in because she's pulling him more to be Daredevil than yeah. being Matt Murdock. In a lot of ways, like you kind of have Electra kind of more or less being in that same sort of like assassin sort of thing that Stick was, where it's just like, no, like we're fighting the good fight. We we got shit to do. We got the hand. Like you got this mythical fucking you know fight <laughs> right you can't worry about fucking your mundane day job uh, no stay that's that's the false real world come fight the real battle with me yeah like that's kind of thing that's the fucking illusion of reality that you're dealing with don't don't fucking fall for that and and on top of all that then you got the love triangles and there's quite a few going on here um you got matt electra and karen it looked like matt and karen were gonna hook up and yeah, Karen's kind of all over the place in terms of where she's at emotionally, kind of low. Very and it's so. not, at times it's kind of hard to tell whether that's just her being nice or whether she's interested or, like, where that is at. Like, because sometimes you kind of get, like, that kind of vibe between her and Foggy, but you don't know if that's, yeah. like, a friendship or, like, there's an interest there or... And I was really, it was really strange at the beginning of the season because I was a little confused at first. I was like, I thought her and Foggy had a thing going on and then all of a sudden it's her and Matt. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, what the... I mean, they were kind of hinting at it a little bit in season one. Well, yeah, but they kind of hinted at the entire love triangle a bit in season one because you do have, like, the weird kind of thing between her and Foggy where, like, they're in a burning building. Right. This one, it was just like, Foggy was okay with it. I was like, I would have been a little bit more pissed off. Yeah, and then it's weird because then you have Foggy with, like, his uh, old colleague from, like, the one job. Yeah, the the And then there's, like, the Karen might be kind of, like, is interested in Punisher in a weird way, but that might be in a... A fascination. Yeah. Or curiosity. Yeah, or, like, kind of a hope for redemption sort of thing. And Mm -hmm. it's, like... It's one of the things, like, that is... It's kind of all over the place this season. And it's kind of hard... And I'm not sure if that's trying just to keep people on their toes about it or if it's just like it's a character it's really hard to define i think it's just something that keep they keep messing with you with you know they keep it's just one more thing that he that daredevil or matt murdoch has to deal with Hmm. in his life that is just he's it's it's out his his life literally spins out of control and then in this season i mean yeah i mean like you definitely see him almost having a real like there's a real difficulty dealing with the daredevil aspect of his life. Yeah. Like, whereas before he was trying to find the balance of how far he can go. Right. Before he goes too far. And you de- definitely have that role again once you deal with him in Punisher. Oh, yeah. Because like, the, the, the Punisher is just the icing on the cake of everything else that's going on. Yeah. Like, it's you really have, you know, someone who's kind of taking that sort of similar mentality of Kingpin. It's about the results, mm-hmm. you know, sort of thing. But kind of in the same side as daredevil yes so it kind of it reimburses that kind of you know the do not kill rule yeah yeah Yeah, very much and it's uh it's an interesting moral concept i think the show does really well but it definitely puts an extra strain on murdoch throughout the entire season yeah it definitely does um let's talk about electra for a little bit um probably the best incarnation of her so far would you say yeah i mean you really only have one other like on screen comparison, right. but I mean, did you ever see the old school like uh like spin off of the Daredevil movie that was just the Electra standalone film? Yes, and that's what I was I've been referring to. Uh that was uh what's her name? Um um Oh god, now I've forgotten already. I should have put it in the notes and I didn't. I, I don't remember who played the uh Electra in the Ben Affleck film and the Electra spin off. No. I can picture her she does this credit card commercials now. Um it, it, it doesn't really matter. Anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so... But yeah, and don't get me wrong, like, those had issues with script writing, which is worse for Elektra than it was actually the Daredevil film, but... Yeah. Uh, I, I think a lot of that is writing, whereas it really kind of was the kind of downfall of the previous kind of incarnation. Well, and, 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 by, and by the movie incarnation, I... I, I because I didn't know who Electra was until I saw that movie. Really, it, it kind of left me feeling like she was like, like the girl from Mortal Kombat that had the size as well. Like, it kind of, oh, uh, um, whatever her name was. It wasn't Katana. It was um, anyway. Whoever, 
Melina, yeah, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it, it was just like, oh, okay, so Mortal Kombat stole either this from Marvel or Marvel stole it. You know, that, that was kind of my, my thing. That, that was, that like, the more popular version of that character. Yeah. Or like, the, it was, like, kind of that trope sort of thing that yeah. you connected to. And that was pretty much until I... And then I saw this season, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, finally... It, it did a lot yeah. better in terms of, like, actually giving her a backstory. I like the actress. That because you later. have, like, the childhood thing, mm-hmm. you have her... Like growing up, you know, fighting the hand. Right. Like you have her connection to Murdoch. Like, there's a lot of like aspects that really give her a lot, lot more backstory. Oh yeah, because you know the backstory with Matt alone, how she was stick gave her the mission to kind of bring Matt back into the fold. Yeah. You know, to fight the war, but she, she had to get him to kill. Yeah. He wouldn't do it. You know, he had that whole back thing. Of course, he fell in love with her in the meantime. You know, mm. so they got that whole. Yeah, I mean, that's another sort of dynamic of, like, Matt being kind of on the edge, because you more or less have her just being like, here's a dude, and, like, he's... He's right there. Yeah. Take him out, you know? Yeah. He he killed your dad, you know? You can get revenge at any time, like... Right. This is, you know, what your life's been leading up to this point. Right, and then he does, he obviously does the 180, and then she walks out on him, essentially. Yeah. You know, so that that's and then she shows up back up in his life. So that's you know that's an interesting dynamic to her. And then she's also dealing with her own demons. Mm. You know that whole scene I, where she's just like drenched in blood and almost like a carry scene. And she's like, "Do you want me?" <laughs> like this, I'm like, "Whoa, <laughs> somebody's got some serious issues." Um, you know. Well, I mean, she's been you know raised in a violent scenario from a young age. Like you go right. down to the scenes where like. She has, like, a sparring partner, and she just, like, snaps his fucking arm. It's like, oh, shit. That yeah. is... And at the same time, it's like, you can tell, like, there's that inner sort of thing she's kind of fighting with. Yeah, yeah, she's fighting her demons, and then they put the twist at the end of the season with her that she is the Black Sky. Did you it, feel that felt a bit forced? It felt a little bit... At least, like, within the season? I think so. I felt like they should have... This season should have had maybe two more episodes, or another, or at least one more episode. Maybe yeah. it should have been 14 episodes. Because it's really kind of a weird twist at the end, and then it's not like she really gains, like, authority over the hand because of it. Right. Like, she... In theory, like, that's, like, the thing they're really... They want to be, like, the boss or, like, kind of the head figure. Yeah, like, and she... It, but she gains, like, no authority over the hand in that process. Yeah, that that was the one... That was the one... The real weird thing. They're, like, they reveal, oh, you are the Black Sky. You yeah. are our leader. Even though, apparently, like, there was many, like, possibilities. Because, like, there's that one kid that they uh, stick kills, like, in the previous season, right? Yeah, but they called him something else. Oh, he, did he they? wasn't the Black Sky. He was something else. Oh, okay. But, um... But yeah, so I can't remember the name of it now. But um, but yeah, so it, that was just a really weird twist because then... Stick- like it just seems like it's so on a dime twist too. Like there's nothing really leading up to it that heavily. Yeah, you don't get much from Stick. All of a sudden Stick just finally realizes that what all the other members have been trying to tell him that they need to kill her before she becomes the Black Sky and, mm. and he's out to kill her all of a sudden and kind yeah. of in a strange way. You but know, it seems like, like a father kind of, to him kind of thing. It's, yeah, there's that sort of like, well, I'm going to use her as long as she's useful, and then when the time comes, I'll take her out sort of thing. It's like, which I guess that sort of stick mentality, like, you know, very kind of stoic, practical mm-hmm. sort of way of approaching it. But at the same time, it's weird just because, like, it just seems like such a sudden transition. And, like, like you can maybe argue there's a couple things that kind of point towards it earlier on in the show, but, like, not a lot. No, not really. It, it, it's it really kind of comes out of nowhere yeah. it, until the la- like you don't know something's up until the last couple episodes where Sticks gonna kill her or mm. is thinking about killing her or whatever. Yeah. You know? Though actually, like some of those scenes are actually really good. Oh yeah, I, like you actually have like some of the scenes like where like Electra's fighting with Stick and mm. just it's, it's a good example of like how much she's put into like the martial arts component for the show oh yeah because in that regards that actress did an amazing job with the fight scenes i mean the fight scenes overall in season two were much better than i mean season one was were really good really i don't know if i'd say the fight scenes are better in season two i would say they're on par i think they're they're better um because it clearly also tries to duplicate the hallway fight scene that did from the first season. Yeah, they duplicated but, it on the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. But I actually think the hallway from the first season actually is a little better. I think it's better because it's one sh- it's one frame, hmm. one shot, where this one is multiple levels. Yeah. Um, but between that and what we will talk about here shortly with Punisher and his hmm. fight scene, 
I think that puts it over the yeah. top for no, season it's, one. In terms of not only the fight scenes, but just like kind of the camera angles and like the lighting, there does seem to be a bit of a difference between season one and season two as well. Yeah. And for season two, I find it kind of threw me off a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah, like there's just something about the lighting or camera angles to it that it don't seem like they pair up real well with the first season. And it's like, uh, that might be why like the fights just seem off to me for the second season. Huh. That's interesting because, and again, I don't want to talk about it until we get to it, but this, the Punisher scene I thought was the hallway scene redone with brighter lighting, but it was just as intense. Oh yeah. As, like the hallway, like the Punisher fight scene was up there. Yeah. And like that was a good fucking scene. So, so between that and the, the stairs is, the reason why I think it was better in season two, yeah, but because you got fair. two epic kind of fight yeah. scenes out of it. So yeah, I one. think the Punisher scenes like throughout this entire thing. The only exception being like kind of the later end of the Punisher storyline, where it's a little not, it's a little funky. Well, I don't like how what they did at the very end with Punisher, where he just shows up and he shoots his gun at the hand a couple times, and then he that's it. And yeah, I expected him to kind of show up at the end with and the fight the way through. Yeah. I, I, we can probably save this until we actually get the Punisher yeah. thing, but like the costume bit, um, you know, I was okay with that actually. No, no, that, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like that was fucking fantastic. Yeah. Like it was so fucking subtly done mm-hmm. that I thought that was fucking fantastic. Yeah, where like you actually don't really have the Punisher in costume until like just at the very end, where you just have that kind of slight, just like almost barely sprayed on like sort of skull and is like oh that is fucking well done <laughs> like right. that is what justifies that last fucking scene man all right well let's go ahead and talk about him then let's move on to the punisher so we can finally get it all off our chest because it's he's obviously our i know he's my favorite from season two i'm sure he was yours um no yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i i mean don't wrong like we do later on do see fisk is actually in this yeah. season as well and fisk is fucking awesome yeah but at the same time, like, this is such the fucking perfect rendition of Punisher. Well, and they tried to do Punisher so many times. And yeah, done it. like, there's been, what, three or four movies? I think at least two that I know of off the yeah. top of my head. And they never did it right, never did no, it justice. No, like, don't wrong, like, they're, some of them are okay. Mm-hmm. Like, but you look at this version of the Punisher, and it is, it's like you take the character and kind of merge it with, like, an almost taxi driver-like, mm-hmm. like, acting version of it. Yeah. And it's... It's such a fucking perfect fit. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think John. His name is John Bernthal, and uh, he just does a phenomenal job with the character. Uh, right off the bat, I love how they do the compare and contrast between Punisher and Daredevil. Yeah, it really does kind of set them apart and shows the similarities and like oh, yeah. it shows where like they contrast each other from the universe and like it still plays on that same sort of moral storyline you had from the first season. Sure. It just kind of expands on it a little bit, and well, I think it does it really well. Well, the one line Punisher says that, that really kind of sets the tone for the season is he, he goes, you're one bad day away from being me. Mm. And I love that line. Oh, yeah. Because he literally, Daredevil is walking a very, very thi- fine... Yeah, and I mean, that's always been like, like his kind of... Even back to the first season, like he kind of not going too far... Like, making sure he's still, like, where he wants to be morally. Mm-hmm. Like, that's always been, like, a fine line for him. And, like, having someone who just pushes that even closer and closer to the edge, like, yeah. makes that all the better. Like, there's, like, that rooftop scene where, like, pun- or, like Daredevil can get away. He just has to kill the one dude. And it's just like, no. No. Yeah. It's it's uh, the killer, the, the killer not to kill rule is a big theme. The, um... But you know what's interesting though is you got Daredevil and Punisher, you got Matt and Electra. Electra ends up choosing the light side and ends up dying. Mm. She kind of chooses to to be one of the good guys with Daredevil mm. and fight just fight the hand. She ends up dying. Punisher ends up killing the blacksmith. <laughs> he lives. Mm. So it's kind of a weird kind of yeah. It's not sort of cross. You're not your fate isn't guided by your morality. Here. Right. Not in this episode like, anyway. It is kind of one of those interesting things, and it's. I think this is also a good character example of why these shows do really well with their villains. Mm -hmm. Because you look at, you know, Frank here, and you do have backstory, you do have emotion, you have, like, that human element. And, like, once you get into those courtroom scenes, like, where, like, he's going over, like, his family's death, and he's. They're wanting to, you know, please, like, insanity. And he's like, no, I am aware of what I am doing. Yeah, I know exactly, I know what, exactly what the fuck I did. Yeah. And I wouldn't take that fucking back. And you're just like, oh. Yeah. There is some, like, just having that ownership of, like, 
you know, where you are morally and, like, what you feel you justify is, like, it was so fucking well done. Oh, it was. He, he just captures that character and just the, the, the rage, the mortal rage that you can see it in his eyes, the way he, his, uh, his body language. The, and the I, weird thing is, like, I feel like a lot of people can watch that character, and even if you wouldn't take it that far, you can probably understand that character to a certain extent. Oh, yeah. Like, there's no one who doesn't watch, like, messed up shit on the news and hasn't at least God, considered... Man. You know, like yeah. someone doing shit like that. Well, sure. I mean, if somebody took my daughter away from me, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, I'm going to be pissed off. I'm going to be really, really pissed off. You know, yeah. I, I understand that. Like you, there's an uh, understandable rage looking at the atrocities of the world around us, mm-hmm. and having a character that kind of is able to roll with that is a kind of, in a way, like a, a wish fulfillment scenario, right? Very like, much so in some ways, because yeah, who doesn't? sometimes just want to pick up the gun and you know yeah there's always of course we always take that step back but yeah i mean still. once again there's a reason that's you know in a fantasy section right, right? but right. it's one of those things like yeah it, it's understandable like taking that kind of rage you see in the world and you know having that applied to a character and making that a relatable sentiment but in this case you have a guy who you know has had some you know knocks to the head that has you know, been in a warlike scenario who has, you know, had pretty much everything wiped away from him. And, like, you build a three-dimensional character so much better than the movies tried to do with this. And I think, you know, having this extra time to develop the character might be yeah. a large reason for that. I think so, too. I mean, you, when you got 13 hours to develop a character mm. compared to two hours, two and yeah. a half hours max, right? Yeah, and so. of that two-hour movie, how much is actually going into backstory? How much of right. that is going into actually developing the character? Whereas you and I might be okay with two and a half hours of backstory and very little action. Mm doesn't usually translate well to the box office yeah so but at the same time like especially by the time you get those court scenes where he's justifying everything he's mm-hmm. doing where he's arguing his own case right. to a certain extent like you really do have like a really good idea of that character yeah again like, it really builds on it in ways like the films never could mm, i agree 100 percent with everything you just said because it, it it i just can't rave enough about this actor i just i'm it's yeah, just, it's he did the role perfectly. He, he did do the role perfectly. Let's talk about Punisher and Fisk because that's that's this is the the holy shit moment of the the season. That jail fight scene to me is it's the hallway scene all over again. But whereas Daredevil killed nobody, just mm-hmm. beat the shit out of people, he goes through and murders the fuck out of everybody. Yeah, of everyone in. he's locked in. Yeah, with. I mean it looks like there's you know it's a long. You know, that prison hall, mm. Fisk closes the door, locks him in, and the motherfucker just goes on a murder rampage through, <laughs> through everybody. Well, yeah, and it's funny because that's it's Fisk setting him up yes. to do what Fisk wants. And then he does it, and then Fisk is like, okay, you're dead. You know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you're, there's no way you're going to survive this. Yeah. And he fucking plows right through him. Yeah, and, like, you more or less sent, you know, Frank on a murder rampage. <laughs> and, like, he's like... All right, well, I was trying to fight against this part myself briefly, but all right. Yeah. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. And he just lo- lets loose, dude. And it's just, it is so brutal. I yeah. mean, in your face. It's, I don't want to say it's gore, but it, it, t- it, it has it, its moments. It has its moments, and it is just Like, it's, it's brutal. brutally honest about violence. Yes. Not, not the, it's a little bit unrealistic, but hey, it's a comic book movie series. Well, yeah. But I still. mean, you're going to have that. Way, but I mean, just it shows damage. Yes, like, and it shows damage in ways that old school interpretations of this might not have done as heavily. Yeah, in fact, I would say it was so much violence. I am surprised, even on Netflix, that they would. I mean, that they get away. probably because it's a new medium. Yeah, and it's not as well regulated, maybe. But well, I don't you know. really know if they have the same sort of rating standards or like to what extent they apply because they may not even. I don't know. Like, it really is one of those things, like. If you don't want to watch anything on Netflix, don't watch it. And or, I mean, yeah. like, they probably do still have recommendations. Like, they go through the algorithms and stuff like that, but... It's pretty much user choice. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, you look at how emotionally out there, like, Jessica Jones was. Yeah. Like, that was pretty mature as well, but... Like, in terms of, like... And honestly, I actually would still make the argument that's more mature. <laughs> in terms of, like, just... True. Like, emotional torment. Emotional and, torture. This, yeah. is a, this is just a guy that's murder... Or, 
Well, he, let's just, I don't want to know if it's necessarily, yeah, it's murder. It, yeah. Call it for what it is. It's, he's murdering these people. Oh, yeah. He's murdering people left and right. Even though they're trying to kill him too, but he's, he's just, Well, sometimes. Sometimes, but some of them are just. <laughs> sometimes they're just, you know, getting sniped at. Yeah, they're the next piece of meat. Um, yeah. But I mean, like, even when you introduce, like, Frank, like, he's more or less just walking into bars, shooting up entire mobs. And right. Like, like, they didn't know games. he was coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's just flat out murder, man. Let's talk about the other interesting thing with Punisher and Fisk. After Fisk realizes what kind of talents he has, he releases him into his city while yeah. he's going to stay there and plot and plan. Well, the funny thing is, like, you know. it's more or less Fisk doing the same thing twice. <laughs> Kind of, but I really like. Like, I really enjoyed it, though. Oh no! I think this is. It shows how smart and calm and collected Fisk is as a person. Mm -hmm. Like he's pretty much like, all right, well, I had this dude clear out my cell so I can run the prison, right? And he's like, oh shit, he didn't die. Good for him. Release him in the city. There's going to be a whole lot of people trying to take my spot, and and I want it clear for when I get back. When I get back, and I think they end up using him to get at that DA. I really do. Yeah, probably. Um, or I think he's part of that plan anyway. Yeah. Fisk is, um, but so. it's one of those things like it, it goes back to like why I find Fisk such an interesting character. He's calm, collected, mm-hmm. but also amazingly strong and can use his emotion for his own benefit. And I liked it. I even liked how they showed how Fisk kind of took over the jail. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah, to it, see how he built himself up. Just one little piece yeah, at a time. time. Yeah, but I mean, you also have like that kind of conversational scene between like Fisk and Punisher, and I thought that was that's what like, I that, really liked. I think that's interesting that that can be one of the highlights for this sort of show is actually mm-hmm. like the more like talking heads moments of conversations between like different like opposing ideologies. Yes, like you look at Fisk and Punisher, and in some ways they are really similar. Like they both have this kind of it's, you know, the end point that matters sort of personalities. But you do see the nuances and differences between them that really kind of play out. Yeah. It's it's just, it's brilliant how it uses them. It's br- like everything you just said. He's, uh, you know, I want these people out of my way. I'm releasing you. But in reality, I'm going to use you. I'm going to use the fear of you that the people have, mm. you, you know, to get what? push his agenda oh, yeah. really but i mean like i mean they don't come out and say it but i, I really well, yeah. think that but i mean that is kind of the case like mm-hmm. you have this cle- have him like kind of clear out help pave the way for him to take control of the prison yeah he sees how well he does that is like and because essentially you know there's going to be a power vacuum yes you know in the city out. as a whole yeah. like when he's in prison yeah so he's aware of that he's a smart enough guy to know how that works and like he can either try to slowly work his way up the same way, or he can just let Punisher run loose and kill off a lot of potential, you know, yeah. you know, competition. Did you feel like he was more kingpin in this this season than last? Because I did. I felt he, like he took over more the mantle um, of the kingpin than than. I don't think he's saw. more of it, but I do think you see him in a more like in a different scenario where you have to see him working from the bottom up, right. Whereas before is like you really see him at the top and mm-hmm. kind of just working more in the shadows. You don't really have that element of his backstory as much. You don't have that element of um, how he wants to improve the city. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I think he feels almost rejected by the city yeah. from the last season. It, so I think he's yeah. almost just said, fuck it. I'm just going to make going to be good for mine. <laughs> right. That's what I mean. That's why last like season. You don't have that altruistic yeah, aspect of him. Right. Exactly. Last season, it was all about. Well, I'm gonna I'm doing right by the city, even though I'm doing bad things to do it. Mm. This time around, he's building himself up for himself, and yeah. he's going to run this. He's going to take over the city when he gets out for himself. Yeah. So to me, that's more kingpin than I, I can see your point of that. Like yeah. it's definitely a much more. It's closer to a villain model we're used to. Mm-hmm. But I also think there's still dynamics to kingpin that you know allow for that to be a bit more nuanced. Mm. Like you definitely see like his relationship to. Uh, is uh fiance and like the last season that playing out right like you definitely think there are probably lingering aspects of wanting to like improve the city there mm-hmm. but it's definitely something on the surface it's kind of been rejected on yeah it'll be interesting to see if uh in daredevil season three at whenever we get that that uh if they bring um, her back or not because it, he's i gonna think be we probably different. won't see daredevil season three until after defenders yeah that's what i mean that's yeah. i'm not sure when but but it'd be interesting to see like when we actually see Kingpin again for that sort of role, because 
like he might not be like the main villain defenders. Uh, we probably won't see him in um, Iron Fist. They say he's saying he's not, but he could be telling a white lie there. I, yeah, he, you know, I don't know. Like he wasn't supposed to be in Daredevil season two either. Right. So that's yeah. what I mean. So it it'll be interesting though if and when whenever they decide to bring back his fiance mm. back if how that's going to play out because yeah. that's his one link back to the person he used to be. Kind of. Like, it's an emotional link for him. Like, yeah. And it's something that, you know, on an emotional level is very important to him. Mm-hmm. So Right. Like, and it's a very humanizing aspect to the character as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, we've, we should probably move on. We're spending a lot of time on Kingpin. He's only in a few episodes. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Karen. Um, Karen kind of goes on a journey here. Um, she's still wanting justice. Mm-hmm. She's still never satisfied with with uh with something that she doesn't feel that's out of place like in this mm. case punisher's cover story yeah she never believes it yeah she kind of dives into it pretty heavily which is the same reason you kind of see her going to being a bit of a journalist last season mm-hmm. like you really see her diving into kind of the some of the backstory for him here as well yeah and she kind of i won't say she slides into ben Yurick's old spot but she kind of earns it she earns her wings so to speak her journalistic I mean, wings i guess you're kind of supposedly was in that role for like 20 plus years but yeah, yeah like it's getting there yeah like she finally by the end of the season she's she's got a job there yeah you know it, she just kind of pushes her way in at first mm. reluctantly the what's his name um i can't remember the editor's name the editor whoever the editor is and uh that's pretty bad but um but the editor was reluctant at first to help mm. her. And honestly, last season in season one, I thought the editor was... was Crooked. A, yeah, I thought he yeah. was a bad guy. It really kind of points that way in season one as well. Yeah. And but like it's one of those things like it ends up being like a secretary that's just off screen or some shit. Yeah, yeah, the whole time. So it's kind of set up as like kind of one of those like false flag sort of things. But it, it did a well job of it. They did a good job and it was kind of like redemption for him mm. to build her up. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. you also see that sort of kind of aspect of Karen herself like taking interest in Punisher not only do we have that kind of looming backstory that we never really dive into either this season or last yeah. uh, we do have her killing off you know uh, Fisk's you know hench- or right hand last season as well which she still has that she hasn't really faced the music for no but I mean yet. the mad I have to imagine, like, the second Kingpin finds out who killed him, <laughs> like, he's just going on a fucking tirade. Like, I'd imagine, like, he would break out of prison yeah. just for fucking that. Yeah, he would. Yeah, I think and Wesley, then probably walk back into prison yeah. and try to say, like, oh, no, I was here the whole time. Yeah, I can see that. Cause, or just go ahead and charge me. I don't care. Because yeah. Wesley was such a dynamic. You oh, know, yeah. I mean, like, that was such a close friend for him. Like, right. I couldn't see him do anything else but just go on a fucking murdering <laughs> rampage about it. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see where that goes as well yeah. going forward. Um, we already highlighted a little bit on this with Daredevil himself or Matt. Um, the relationship, Electra gets in the way. Um, but by the end of the series, Matt reveals right at the very end of the series that he's daredevil to her. Yeah, like he's kind of slowly expanding the amount of people he's open to about being daredevil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like one extra person at a time. So, I guess the relationship may or be, may not be on again, I don't know. Um, it, it's kind of up in the air. And how is she going to how do you think she's going to take him it, being It's kind daredevil? of interesting because like Karen is an interesting character, but it's also a character that it's really hard to read where, where they want to go with her. Yeah, like you look at someone like Murdoch, he's very clear path where they want to go with that character. You look at someone like Punisher or Frank, and like there's a very clear path of where they want to go with Frank Castle. And with her, it's really hard to see where they're going with it. I she's not Lois Lane. I mean, you know, no. I and the fact that she is a reporter and that she knows not only, Matt is Daredevil now, even though yeah. Matt has saved her life as Daredevil. Yeah. I don't know if she can keep that secret. If, yeah. yeah. Well, not just that, but... Well, I imagine she can, because, like, not only has she killed a person herself, and is dealing with kind of that guilt complex of that a little bit. Yeah. Um, there's also her origins, which we don't know about. Yeah. And it's just, like, with all of those aspects to it, it could go really in a lot of directions for this character. Well, especially if Matt... You know, Matt walks a tightrope as it is, and if Matt, you know, they try to you know, even paint Matt in a bad light again, hmm. you know, she might start questioning 
you know, what she should do. Yeah, possibly. She's all about justice. She's at the end of the day, that's what she she cares about real justice, you know, and, and Yeah. For I mean, whatever to reason. Extent. You know. So I, I don't know. I think it could be a, a theme for season three. I she has kind of an obsessive personality and yeah. that could be part of it. Um Of course she has her dark sides too and she might relate that way. I don't know. Yeah, I mean but, it's once again it's just a character that like if you had like one character you wanted to take like a wild turn, like it's it's probably Karen you could do that with, and it could kind of paint it in where it makes sense. Yeah. So it's really kind of up in the air where they'll go with her, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, and once again, whether she'll show up in the next season of Daredevil or maybe even pop up in Defenders, it's hard to say. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on to back to Claire. Claire Temple, of course, the is back again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Really, she helps Matt with the injuries again. She helps a couple people with their injuries again. Um, uh, also, you have like kind of her scene at the hospital, like right. when the hand starts coming back, and she was like near the autopsy room where the one like ninja came back. That's I guess. right when he comes back to life. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Um, she's kind of drawn back into the the world, except kind of she's drawn in so deep this time she loses her job. Yeah, like she's know? kind of like having some issues with the job to begin mm, with, right. apparently, but. Yeah, by the time you get through the whole thing, like, she's kind of pinned as a bit of a scapegoat for some of the scenario. Right. So, yeah, like, she's pretty much as, well, fuck it, I'm out. And then, you know, you get the, the big handoff where she goes, oh, I'm going to leave town. And then, obviously, we know she shows up in Harlem next. Yeah. So, which is Luke Cage, so. Which isn't really that far away, though. Like, no, I mean, it's leaving I mean, town, it's, but it's, it's like, it's, it's just going to a different yeah, block. Yeah, it's, it's the next, next town over, right? Yeah. You know, a couple, yeah, precisely, so. They don't wrong, like. It's it's Uptown, kind of leaving downtown. town, like it's a little different, but not that different, right? So, yeah, but so, I don't know. I don't know if it really expanded on her character too heavily. Not, otherwise, though, not really, because it. <coughs> I don't think there's a lot for her to do in season two. Really, well, then she only really popped up for like an episode or two. Right. So, yeah. kind of like uh, Jessica Jones. Yeah, where know? she's just there and like it kind of introduces her to Luke Cage and Jessica right. and like. You have that little eye scene that was kind of cool. Yeah, and here it's just a kind of a reintroduction to her to know that mm. she's still in contact with Matt at some yeah. you know some level. You know, it, it there's really honestly, I I really don't think she was really needed even that much. Maybe other than the, um, the further the whole ninja thing along. Maybe I I think it's a good introduction for some of the hospital scenes with the ninjas, like with the hand stuff. And yeah. actually, I think these are some of the better hand like bit oh, yeah. scenes yeah like because especially by the time you get to the end it gets a bit more like convoluted and out there but like, the hospital scenes is actually is legitimately pretty fucking cool they are pretty cool they, that's there's some more fight scenes there for you they, yeah they were pretty good um all right let's talk about foggy real quick um still dealing with matt being daredevil um obviously we've already talked about matt being absent more and more um, leaves Foggy to do the lawyering and yeah, like really you comes into his own though. Yeah, not only do you see him kind of coming to his own there where he's really taking on more of the Punisher case, you go into a bit more of his backstory with, you know, being at the older law firm. Yeah. Um, you kind of have his relationship with the one Other female, female co-worker lawyer, yeah. kind of develop a bit more. Um, not like super heavily, but like you see bits of it. Um, so it does provide a good bit of backstory. Like I think there might even be a couple of the clips for that, like where like the college scenes, like yeah, in this they do season some as well. Flashback scenes, yeah, with him which kind of develop like the character a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, you do still see him kind of having some issues with like Matt with being Daredevil and kind of still kind of trying to accept that sort of thing. Well, yeah, you really see a splinter in their friendship though because Matt is so concentrated on being Daredevil, yeah, that he can't be there for for Foggy or be hmm. Matt Murdock hardly. Yeah, at all. I mean, at one point, like, is it? I don't remember if it's this season or the previous one where like the law firm's almost. It, it, it is. It is. It's the end of Murdoch and Nelson, or Nelson and Murdoch, whatever yeah. it is. So, yeah, they they literally end their partnership, and yeah. he goes off to the the big firm, and mm. Matt's kind of left by himself with Karen, and that's when he reveals himself. So, mm. um, that's kind of where it ends. I I think I guess you could say their friendship, I guess, is rocky at best. Um, they're, yeah, they're I still mean, kind of wanting like, to patch things up. But yeah, I mean, know. Foggy clearly seems like a kind of a loyal dude, so he seems like he kind of wants that to reconnect and work in some yeah. way. But at the same time, like if he doesn't feel like Matt's also kind of in that same mindset, then. There's really not much point for him. Yeah, it was kind of nice, though, to see Foggy really step up into the lawyer scene because he becomes, he's the white knight where 
Daredevil's the Dark Knight kind of thing I going mean, on. Kind of. You know, I mean, not he's to bring def- up Dark Knight stuff, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's definitely a comparison to be drawn to, like, mm-hmm. the Batman series. It, yeah. Definitely, especially the more modern Batman take is definitely focused on the do not kill rule mm-hmm. uh, in, in a lot of its versions, so. Yeah. There, there's comparisons, but. But, he, but yeah. He's, um, he's doing things with inside the law, and he's yeah, really I mean, becoming good at what he does. You know, he, he's forced oh, yeah. to. You know? Well, I mean, it seems like they always were kind of good at it just like you don't really get to see that much in the first season yeah like you really see them kind of doing more like outside courtroom sort of interrogation stuff interrogation yeah or meeting with the lawyer kind of talk yeah yeah like you have a lot more just kind of you know kind of storyline setup sort of things for like it's all kind of the lawyer aspect kind of works in the first season whereas this time you really get to see him actually functioning as a lawyer and like seeing that he actually was good at his job, that it was something that he, you know, took pride in, was well at. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you could definitely get to see a lot more of that aspect. Like, you get to see those moments where he shines a lot more in this, like, season. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. All right, well, I think we've dissected season two pretty well. Let's just go right into final thoughts and grades. All right, Aaron, your final thought and grade for Daredevil season two. Uh, I'd probably give it an A minus. Okay. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, the Punisher scenes are great. The Kingpin scenes are great. You, there's lots of great fucking fight scenes. There's lots of character development and a, actually a pretty cool storyline up until about the end with the hand. Um, don't get me wrong. Like, when you're still dealing with like the Yakuza and like Madame Gao and stuff like that, it's still kind of cool and interesting. Even with, like, kind of the stick storyline, you're doing good. It's interesting. It's fascinating. And then up until kind of the end with the hand where, like, don't get me wrong, like, the uh, hand's leader before the Black Sky storyline, it's like the previous ninja that's from the first season comes back and... Finally is, beheads him, stay dead this yeah, time. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's, that's pretty fucking cool. Like, I, I actually really like the fight scenes with that, dude. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I feel like the Black Sky storyline kind of slowed down the season and like felt almost off there towards the end mm-hmm. like and i think it would have been something like had they waited have some of that into the next season would have done better like i think it even with 13 episodes i feel like they were trying to put a little too much on that storyline yeah and if you dragged it out a bit longer or, like let it develop a bit more naturally it would have worked a little better yeah but overall like you that is the best version of fucking punisher we've ever fucking seen and that's, you get to see Kingpin, and, like, there's just so much fucking great with this season that it's it's hard not to recommend it to anyone who's even moderately interested in a good action series or a comic book series. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I think your uh, review and grade are spot on. I as well will give it an A-. I agree with everything you said, even all the... Until the end, I like. I think I said it earlier in the podcast that they had given it maybe made this season fourteen or fifteen episodes long. I don't think it would have felt so rushed at the very yeah, end. Yeah, just giving like the Black Sky storyline more time to develop rather yeah. than just being that twist on a dime sort of thing. Yeah, and I liked the twist. It was just it was it was the twist, and then it was over. Mm-hmm. You know, um, obviously Electra's coming back. She's coming back from the dead at some point. They mm-hmm. put her in the the sarcophagus thing or whatever mm-hmm. the hell that thing was. Um, but I enjoyed. I, re- I really enjoyed Punisher. I enjoyed the surprise of Fisk was great. Uh, I enjoyed Electra, Matt, Foggy, Karen. That that whole, that whole intertwine and uh, that backstory was great. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed all of that. It uh, highly recommend season two uh, as well as season one so far of Daredevil. And uh, it's been just another, really another home run for the Marvel. Marvel uh, company. Yeah, the Marvel TV Netflix. shows have been doing really well on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, don't get me wrong, we'll get into Luke Cage next week, and then we'll have Iron Fist, hopefully, here in a month or so. But, yeah. like, so far, like, with all of them we've seen so far, like, they have been really high-class television. Like, in a lot of ways, better than some of the movies. Absolutely. Well, yeah, and again, they got a lot more time to develop. Mm. But it uh, it's it's a new medium. It's... it's uh, it's rated R comic book content, really. Yeah, it is. but so. it's one of the things like it really 
you understand it's one of those shows that really justifies like some people like referring to the modern era as like a golden age of television yeah very much so because like this really takes an almost either a comic book or like novel format and allows you to kind of have that sort of character development mm -hmm. we have in those mediums that we haven't really had on television no it, up it, until you know the last five or six years and I think it also goes back to my point that I've made other podcasts that I think that there is an audience out there for I, I call it fanboy TV, but it's really not. It's just comic book fans that mm. want real hardcore content for adults. Yeah. You know, it's comic book content, but it's an adult twist mm. you know, told in such a way. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a medium for, you know, fantasy and science fiction that has an adult, you know, you know, target audience. Right. Because, um, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, don't, is the Narnia stuff cool? Or, like, the more kid-appropriate, like, comic book films awesome? A lot of them are. But at the same time, like, a lot of us that, you know, enjoy that as children, you know, grew up, you know, and we had, you know, saw some of the more darker mediums like the Watchmen comics or, um, mm -hmm. you know, some others. And, like, we, we still have a desire for that same sort of medium. Like, we still enjoy fantasy and still enjoy science fiction. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we actually enjoy the more emotional twist to it. Yeah. Or yeah. the more mature content in some cases. And, and that doesn't always have to be graphic violence or, no. you know over-the-top sexuality like it, it can be subtle it can be you know nuanced it can be True. you know game of thrones sort of like drama i was just getting ready to say that it read my mind um so yeah i think there's there's a real medium out there and i think they're starting to discover it i think it's i think in time you're gonna see not only will we see more netflix more hulu, hulu online content but you're gonna see maybe even a fanboy network at some point with just that kind of medium on it because i think there's enough out there i think there's enough you know, Spike TV kind of borderlines that they do a lot of stupid shit. But um, <laughs> I don't know. Is Spike TV still going? Yeah, believe it or not. Oh, nice. But they do. They show a lot of the comic book movies and stuff, though, too. Do they? they do Star Wars and obviously yeah. all that stuff. So I don't know. I think, like, G4 was close, too. In some ways, thing. I think you can look at something like Adult Swim as being kind of a, a justification for that sort of thing. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, there's a lot of times people took cartoons as being very childish, sort of immature thing like comic books did, but... There's always been kind of an adult medium for it. Like, mm -hmm. you can go back to, you know, Ralph Bakshi or Frank Fazetta or a lot of artists that really did more mature themes that could do really interesting things within the field. And, um, yeah. And I, I think we're starting to see that more and more. And, like, I think you look at something like Adult Swim, and that's really shown that there is a market for that. Yeah, it's kind of been like the test bed, right? And yeah. it's starting to, you're starting to see it grow from there, from that point on. Yes, yeah. I mean not, it's not just stupid cartoons. It's you yeah. know we're growing up and we still want to see. We yeah. don't have to give up the comic book. We just yeah, want to see more. Adult yeah, we versions. don't have to you know give up a genre or a medium of storytelling. And in some ways, we can actually take a more mature approach and kind of allow the medium to actually kind of have stories that kind of allow that story to work to its fullest. Absolutely, it's a good end. That's a good good note to end on. Um, all right, so real quick, where can you find four Midwest guys? You just go type in the number four, then type in MidwestGuys.com all together. Number four, MidwestGuys.com. There you can find our iTunes, you can find our Podbean, you can find our YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. All of our podcasts are on there. They're even categorized at the top. If you just want to listen to the binge watch episodes, you click there. If you just want to listen to our Star Wars Rebels reviews, there you click that. If you want to listen to Marvel DC Kings, you just click that. All of those podcasts will be there in order. Um, in fact, I'm getting ready to uh, our Game of Thrones podcast, like we were talking about Game of Thrones. That's there as well. In fact, I'm going to reintroduce that on Twitter be right before Game of Thrones comes out, so you can revisit it's season coming 10. coming out, what, June or July? Yeah, they pushed it back to June because, believe it or not, they didn't have enough cold weather. There wasn't enough snow. Yeah. Winter came, but not apparently in well, real life. yeah. So. Ocean war or, or warming up, apparently. I guess so. So, All right. Well, uh, Aaron, thanks for joining us, sir. Yeah, no problem. And this is B. Willie saying we will catch you next time on Binge Watch for Luke Cage.